we're going to maybe just in terms of the format of tonight's discussion, uh, we're going to have uh, three presentations uh, from uh, Jeanette Beal, uh, from Aisha Gokan, and um, from Ershan Iboiga. And I just want to um, first begin just by welcoming them all um, uh, to Dublin tonight uh, for this panel. We're the, on behalf of the Worker Solidarity Movement and all the organisers of the book fair, we're absolutely thrilled to have them here, uh, thrilled to have other uh, Kurdish Solidarity Network activists who are active in Dublin. We're thrilled to have them here as well tonight too. So I just want to begin by maybe giving them a round of applause. For them. Okay, so we'll have three presentations um, for the first hour, and then we'll open it up to questions and answers, um, and we really hope you enjoy tonight, and that we see you all um, back in Smithfield tomorrow for the rest of the book fair events. So to begin, um, I want to introduce uh, Jeanette Beale. Um, Jeanette is uh, a very uh, powerful, <laughs> uh, or, or uh, strong, a uh, member, an active member of the social ecology movement in the United States. Um, for 19 years, she was the collaborator with uh, the social ecologist Murray Butchkin, um, whose work and whose thought has been quite central uh, to, some, to, to people in, in Rojava. And it's through that connection uh, that Jeanette has become part of the International uh, Solidarity Network uh, supporting the events in Rojava. Uh, she is the current author of um, Ecology or Catastrophe, The Life of Murray Butchkin, uh, which is uh, due for, or which is currently just been released. Um, so without further ado, I just want to welcome Jeanette, and if you want to continue on. Thanks, Tom. So yes, um, my, my unlikely and, and, and circuitous connection with, from the United States with this place called Rojava began with my collaboration with Bookchin for 19 years. Um, for those of you who don't know what he is, I need to just briefly explain that he was, had been a, raised in the um, uh, communist movement in New York in, in the 1930s, um, realized early on um, um, that Marxism Leninism was a dead end. Um, he, had, he, had, he tried to organize the proletariat for the revolution during World War II, expecting the proletariat to rise up, but they did not. And it, he realized around 1946-47 that without um, a, a revolutionary proletariat, Marxism is, is empty of meaning. So where many of his um, comrades moved into the mainstream of American society, he decided to instead to rethink the revolutionary project. And during the 1950s, he looked around for different issues that could represent the limits of capitalism because um, capitalism was an evil system and it had to have limits, it had to end somewhere. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that tomorrow but I just wanna say that what the, one of the key concepts was decentralization. Um, he thought that, that the American society had become very centralized and powerful during World War II and needed to be decentralized and the, in order for it to have a decentralized society, you needed a political unit and what would be the political, what would be the political system for a decentralized society? Well, he looked back to ancient Athens, and he f and and read a lot about the Athenian polis. And here was an instance where people governed themselves, citizens in assemblies governed themselves. And he said, this has to be, this is the basis for a new <coughs> institution. It won't be authoritarian like Marxism was. It's not going to create a tyranny like Stalin did. This is we need an institution where citizens govern themselves. And this is a good early indication of it. Now, of course, the, in ancient Athens, women were excluded. Um, Non-Athenians were excluded. It was a society with slavery. It was an imperialist society. It, it was, there was imperialism associated with it. But none of those things he thought were inherent to this whole issue of face-to-face -face democracy. Those things didn't, were associated with it, but didn't tarnish it. It's the institution itself that interested in him. He looked and throughout other places in history found, and found revolutionary examples of that. For example, in the, the French Revolution of 1793, the sectional assemblies of Paris, where, um, where, where, where uh, uh, assemblies where people once again govern themselves in a revolutionary context, although of course there were guillotines associated with that, but the guillotines were not inherent to that 
question, that institutional framework of face-to-face -face democracy. He talked about, he found instances in the American Revolution where uh, Puritans had come over from England and settled in, in New England, um, and they're seeking religious freedom, separation from all hierarchies, from all priests. They would, they would govern themselves. They formed congregations in places like Massachusetts and Vermont where there were no priests, and then the next day, they used the same, the same congregations became civic bodies where they were assemblies, and they, these civic assemblies called town meetings in New England were among, among the drivers of the American Revolution. Um, he, he was interested in, this, in the, the Russian Revolution. The Soviets were originally councils. They weren't really assemblies, but he wasn't that interested in the Paris Commune either, but Spain fascinated him because of the, the confederal system of the CNT. So he put this all together in the 60s and 70s, and he said, we need to, and he started working it into a program, a program for face-to-face -face democracy. It did, he tried to spread it around the American left and European left, but it didn't take in those years, partly because those left were very attached to Marxism. And, after the, and even after the fall of the Soviet Union, he tried to uh, influence, a, interest anarchists in it, interest the, the new green political movement in it, but they weren't interested in the United States and in Europe. And so he died a disappointed man. He said, my, my work is, is in writing. Someday somebody somewhere will read it and put it to work. And it turns out that someone did in Turkish translation um, in solitary confinement on the island of Imrali in the Sea of Marmara. Abdullah Öcalan read, read this work. And I don't want to say that this was the only thing he read or this was his only influence by no means. There has actually been a book published in, in German that lists almost 100 different sources that, that Ergelin was reading while he was in prison. But this particular idea of face-to-face -face democracy in confederation was very, very interesting to him. And he actually had said in, in, a corris in correspondence that, that he considered himself a social ecologist, which is the name that Bookchin called his ideas and considered himself a good student of Bookchin. In any case, so this became the framework. Now, when Murray, when Bookchin created this, came up with this set of ideas, it was, um, it, there, were, there were also all sorts of historical, historical uh, negatives attached to it. In Athens, slavery, exclusion of women, exclusion of ethnicities. In, in New England, religion, in uh, a, 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 an oppressive religion, in, in Paris, guillotines. Murray took, uh, said, let's just look at the institutions themselves, set aside all that historical stuff, and he, in a way, midwifed it. He gave it birth, he cut away that, that placenta. And it was in that, so it was in that form that it was transmitted to Ergelon, who put it into, who started, who called it democratic confederalism, made some alterations to it. For example, he had, Murray had not, specifically said that women would play an important role, but Ergelin said women are basic to this whole face-to-face -face democracy thing. They have to be. So, um, so it, it was transmitted from him, even, even from his, the solitude of his prison, um, to the Kurdish freedom movement, um, where it began to be put into, put into place, first as, well, both in, in um, in southeastern Turkey, in Bakur, and in northern Syria, or <laughs> Rojava. They had very different experiences in those two places, because of course in, in um, southeastern Turkey, they were working under the, the extremely repressive, uh, need I say, you know, tyrannical um, state in Ankara. Whereas in northern Syria, um, after the, the, the um, Arab Spring reached the, reached the country in the spring of 2000, in 2011, um, the, the Assad forces essentially decamped from the north in order to fight opposition forces in other parts of Syria. And these democratic institutions were able to spring forth and develop and flower. Um, and there were some brilliant institutions that it didn't just happen spontaneously. They were educated by reading Ergelan's works. And he had also re recommended Bookchin, by the way. Um, um, there were um, cooperatives, uh, communes, councils, um, assemblies, um, academies, a lot of grassroots institutions that, that self-consciously created themselves, were, were, were created um, according, by, according to an ideology. Um, I was invited to, uh, to participate in an academic delegation in visiting Rojava in 
um, uh, December of 2014. And of course, my, one of my most, most compelling interests was to see how this played out because you know, if this was going to be, if, if these were going to be, um, if face-to-face -face assembly was, the, was the, 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 the paradigmatic institution for a new post-Marxist revolution, this is the place it was being worked out. And how did that happen? And I actually did um, visit, I was, we were taken, I saw an assembly, I saw an assembly in Kamishlo, and it was, you know, all of the, the historical extraneities were gone because it wasn't just Kurds alone, it was Kurds and Arabs, it wasn't men alone, there were women, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't particularly religious, I didn't see a single guillotine, here it was, here it was, this, this beautiful institution of people making decisions at, the, at their local level. And it was confederal in nature, which is an old anarchist concept of, um, that Bookchin had also written about. Um, at, the, at the basic street level, the level of the residential street was the commune. And, the, um, so, and there would be several of those you know, in, a, in a given neighborhood. So the communes would send delegates, mandated recallable delegates, that's another anarchist principle to a neighborhood council. The neighborhood council in turn would send mandated recallable delegates to the district level, which the district refers to a city and its surroundings. And at the district level, they would send mandated recallable delegates to a larger, um, the, the, can, the, 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 the council for the canton, which is, that was the name of the three, the three enclaves in, in, that were participated in this in the northern city, at Jazeera, Kobani, and Afrin cantons. So, um, so I was delighted to see, to see that um, when I re went, went back again in December, uh, when was it? No, October of 2015, um, a, uh, almost a year later, um, was able to ask some, quest ask a, ask some questions of, the, um, of um, someone in the legislative council about it. He said that there were 4,000 communes in, I thought, was it Chizira or in Rajiva as a whole? I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but there were 4,000. Um, the participation was good. Um, we asked detailed questions like, what happens if there's a disagreement? What if, who resolves the issue? And it, we said something very interesting, that, that, that one, of the, they, they have a, one of the standards by which disagreements are resolved and decisions are made is the social contract of Rojava. It's like a, well, it would be like a constitution if there were a state, but this is an anti-state place. There's, they, they have a deep, deep hatred of states based on, based on 20th century history in the Middle East. So this is a stateless society, and they have, instead of a constitution, which they associate with the state, they have a social contract, which is suitable for their system, that, can, that guarantees you know, gender equality, human rights of, of every, every kind you can imagine, no ethnic or religious discrimination. Um, it sets up the, the, the human rights, it, it, it concretizes the human rights ideals of the society so that when there's a conflict, um, a decision has to be made, that's one, one of the ways it's resolved is to look at that social contract, which I thought was very interesting. It's a point of reference for the whole society. Um, there in, there's a war going on there now, um, as I'm sure you know. Um, from the moment, the moment of the creation of Rojava in July of 2012, it's been, it's been under on, on one form, attack in one form or another, not military, but in, in just about every other way, by Turkey, which cannot tolerate its existence. Um, um, so there's, you would, you would, yeah. What is, it, my, another issue that I am curious about is what is, what is, what kind of effect does being in a war have on a democracy? Because we think of war as very hierarchical, right? It's, it, surely inevitably it's gonna transform this democracy into kind of more like a Sparta than Athens, right? More like, more like a, a, a top-down state. How can you maintain the bottom-up flow of power? And I found that people in Rojava were wrestling with this very, very deeply. And they were very commi but they were very committed to keeping it a bottom-up system. It, it's, it's part of, their, part of their, their intellectual commitment and it's, it, it, to, to, make, to keep it bottom-up. And, I, and I, it, it reminded me of something Murray used to say a lot, which was there's no substitute for consciousness. And it's true, there's no institutional gimmick that can keep 
a democracy going. It depends on people's commitment and their shared aspirations to keep that bottom-up system happening. I also think there's another, well, on, another, another, another thing that works in the favor of keeping the bottom-up system going, and that is the very, in, in paradoxically, the fact of the war itself. Because if you remember, ancient Athens, they had they governed themselves through that citizens' assembly for over a century in wartime. They were fighting the Persians. They were fighting the Spartans. And yet they maintained that democracy. And it, it's not only that they maintained it, but they had to expand it. Because look, these are people, these, are, they had to, they had, these were people fighting, and they needed a say. They needed some purchase. They needed to commitment to what they were doing. You can't, you, can't, you can't just militarize that society. They needed to feel that they had a say. These are in, people, like in Rojava today with their AKs, this is light infantry. They're being asked to risk their lives, so they need a commitment. So during the Athenian process, you know, it starts out with hoplites, who are, these, who are um, the, 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 the armed infantry, but the, 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 the access of the openness, the assembly was expanded and citizenship was expanded for the needs of wartime, not contracted, but expanded to include more working class people, the <coughs> people who would row the triremes, these boats that, would, like, that they would use to like, ram into each other. And I think, I think something like that, in a way, that also helps guarantee the democracy in Rojava today, because these people do have a, they're a, a shared aspiration, they have a shared commitment to the ideas, and they're fighting with putting their lives on the line with very, very low-tech weapons, not even helmets and bulletproof vests in some cases, you know, to fight for something that they believe in. And I think that in itself is, 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 a, is helping to ensure that, that everyone has a say, that this is a shared and collective commitment. I don't, how am I doing time-wise? Five minutes. Five minutes. Um, I, oh, just, just, to, just to say a couple more things. Um, when I was, Bookshin's idea, he originally was writing about this for a, a libertarian municipalism for an industrialized Western society. And in all honesty, he did not have Syria in mind when he was writing about uh, um, um, libertarian municipalism. And he meant this to be, he meant it to be um, an ideology by which um, people could um, mobilize, uh, that citizens' assemblies would be formed in all different localities around, around the country. and in order to have, especially in order to gain control over, the, over their the economic lives, over their political lives, and over the ecological, the, the ecological destruction that was happening in the country, which he saw as ongoing starting in the 60s. This, by, by, by means of, it was by means of local control that people would put an end to, to ecological, to, to the havoc being wrought by corporations on the environment. And so the more people entered it, the more people would participate in the assemblies, and they, the, the larger the confederation would grow until it would constitute, to use a Trotskyist term, a dual power to the nation state, and which, which, in, which would end up ultimately in conflict with it, the military would have to cross over. And so on. <laughs> it's interesting that it happened that, this, that these ideas were picked up not in a, a highly industrialized country, but you know, Rojava is very agrarian. It's very, it's very, um, it's, um, uh, it was actually deliberately kept um, deindustrialized by the Assad regime. And um, I think that's, I think that's, um, I think it speaks to why, one, to a, a reason this, this idea of democracy is so successful, has been so successful there, because it is a very much of a, of a communitarian, a communal society. One thing I've noticed in my two visits there is that Kurdish people, they look out for each other, and they pride themselves on that, they pride themselves on being a community, as opposed to the individualism, for example, of the country I come, the United States, which had, also has an ideology of the free market and, and the individual. Um, this, is, this, is, this is, again, they're self-consciously, it struck me how self-consciously they were opposed to that, to that spiritual death, that, 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 that denigration of the human spirit that is, that, uh, is in, entailed in the kind of I individualism involved in the capitalist system or in what they call capitalist modernity. And they're self-consciously trying to retain that communal focus of Rojava, and in some ways, you know, face-to-face -face democracy isn't a big new idea. You know, many, many tribal peoples and from time immemorial have, you know, collectively governed themselves. It's almost a spontaneous thing. This is just these ideas, these ideological formations of it are, 
are ways that people can do it self-consciously, but I think it meshes very well with that communal focus of, um, and the communal orientation of Kurdish society. I could talk more about the geopolitics, but I think I'll wait for question time for that. In the meantime, I just want to give you what, to convey to you my, my personal entry into this and why I love this, one reason I love, many, one of many reasons I love this place so much. Thank you. Okay, our, our next speaker is Aisha Gokhan. Um, Aisha is a member, an active member of the Free Women's Congress, the KJA in Rojava. Um, and she was formerly a mayor in uh, Nusabin in the region, which has seen um, intense conflict in, in recent times. Okay, so without further ado, I pass you over to Aisha. Yeah. <laughs> جبری حمود شدن از دخازم سلاف برخوادانا کردستان جوارویم کردستان به برخوادان و حمیه سلاف دکی گرکس پس که هنوز دارین. Thank you. I would like to welcome all of you on behalf of Kurdish women and specifically with the tradition of the Kurds. I would like to welcome all of you. یک دن از دخازم سپاس بکم جبو دبلین آنارشیست پرتوکا فواری که ام حمو دعوتی برکرم I would like to express my appreciation for invitation from the Dublin anarchist folk fair and bringing us here to express our view with you از اینها پردرش نکم جبو که هون دکاربن پرسین خواه زیده تر بکن قوم رجلین آزاد چل سالیه لکردستان علی باکر I'm not going to like explain everything I would just want to leave certain things to you to ask me during the question times the Kurdish woman congress is four years old in in north of Kurdistan in in Turkey side بلکه هون نزنه بم کردستان لکه داره کردستان دنابرا چار دولتان دا به سکای سپیکو هزار و نهصدو شانزدان دا به چار پارچه بویه Some of you may be aware, some of you may not. The Kurdistan was divided between four countries by the Pinko Treaty in 1916. Kurdistan is a very big part of the country. This is the picture of Kurdistan on the map. از دخازم دیرو که مچه دست پیکر جبو که ام حمو لکردستانه جبری حمو تشتان جنن که تولی گری لابویی بلکی نه هم بون لی اوانا جیرانه ما بون حواله ما بون خاندوان اندبستان ما بون اوانا چون سره چیا تسیرک لنوا جواکی کر که جن بیجن حکه او دکارن لسره چیا بکن چما ام نکارن نوا جواکی دا بکن Dynamique avec Permazen, je serai qui a d'accord Nava Bajara. The challenge, you know, the Kurdish community comes from the women who joined the PKK. The PKK, those women show out that if they can struggle on the mountains against the state resistance and the environmental difficulties, why we can't struggle among the society to challenge it in positive way through the contribution of the women. انرژی می پرمزن جیان دکه در نوا بازاران که جن به هز هز جن جنی بگری. Basically, the influence of those women on mountains they bring a big inspiration to us to make us strong, from to get strength from women to another woman in the society. شب و به که دیروز که مه که مگه چهل سالی نه سکی نجاسس هند زنن ل نوا پاریسه. جالی دولت استخبارات نوانت و هات قتل کردن هزار و نه صد و هشتی دل زندان آمده جنا که لبر خدا جب و آزادیا جن و کردستانی. We say that the movement is four years old, but we have also background of it. In 1980s, there was a famous Kurdish woman woman who was struggling in the Arab prisons, and then. Into recently, she in 2003 she was. Can you have a question? In 2013, she was killed in France by the Turkish intelligence services. Do you know how many people have been 
کوفالا جنین ولاد پرز دست بکر حضار و نهزد و نود و دیان دا و پیش به ما وکی جنان سر بخواد به پارتین سیاسی دا جه گردن ده ها پیدا نود و چاران دا ده حضار و سیسیان دا امبون تفگیر جنین دموکراتیک و آزاد و جه پی و ما ایدی حمو سازیان دا جه گردن Basically, the Kurdish women, like they started uh, taking their places in, among the political parties and the society NGOs, and gradu uh, gradually it is increased in to, to be represented in every part of the society. Yeah, very important. Because the Kurdish women, the Shbari and Bibin Congress, the Hamu Kadin Jianida, Waki Economy, Ecology, Politica, or the Reverberti Haramida, the Parastana Ravada. دیپلوماسی دا به پروردهی تندرستی د دانس دا بشان دا ام جن برای خستم بون. In every part of the life, uh, the women start um, organize their stuff in Turkey and uh, taking uh, become the part of the decision making. Like for example, in the law or in the decision making of the look at, uh, in in the in the area of the law, in the area of the social security. Uh, challenge the uh, education of the children and youth as well. Kaja waki pargala ke kum federala jenet jigot jibok rebere me ojalan got hatta jin azat nave jivak azat nave o anja democracy bjene chewe am da hazaru sezdan da bun kongre kongre jibo me pargala ke kum federala jibo jinen mezopotamia. Uh, the, the Kurdish um, freedom movement, uh, women freedom movement, uh, they have like confederalism system, uh, and the leader, uh, their leader, which they accepted Öcalan as a leader, he said that without the freedom of women, the society could uh, could not be free, uh, and we take this as a perspective for our struggling. Je veux dire que am je pense du yek delegation jinin le Kurdistan et محلمی عرب، سوریانی، آسوری، کندالی، کرد همو در بین وی سیوانی در به پینسی دو یک دلگاسیونی که لکردستان هاتی هل بجارتن ام به سی دو یک مجلیسا که جای به چلو پینج ریوه بران و به یانزده کوردیناسیونان لجمع تا او سوکاتی تنه ام وکی کوردینه خواه لکردستان ریوه بردکن Basically, we have 501 delegation from different uh, women groups amongst the Kurdistan. These people come from different ethnic backgrounds, uh, like for example, Assyrian, uh, Armenian, Kurdish, Arabs, and Turks. We don't have like the chair system. We have like a coordination system, and our, our coordination system is consists of 11 different organizations. جبو که ام دو خدان حمیان دا ریختن کری نه جبو مه پاراستن روا پر مهمه ام حتی جن خانه پارزن هزک سردستی از زلم تجران جنان نکاریم پارز یک ریباز مه ام بخو خواب پارزن و ام بخو خار ریبا بر بکن. Basically, for us, self-defense is very important. When we talk about the self-defense, it's not self-defense to take actions like in violent way, but we believe that if the woman can't that self-defend itself, they will not be, in, uh, they will not be free to demand patrocities plus the state uh, pressure, uh, oppressions. I think that the people who are living in the world are living in the world, 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 de jinan sardas bikin iro buko haram o daish o akp wek hav jinan bidare zore sardas well we believe if there is no self defense of a unit for women like the the woman will, is going to be enslaved as it's happened in uh, by buko haram and isis in uh, as um, the men patristi they will always think that they have a more strong uh, uh, more strong Strong, stronger than women to enslave them. Irojinen ezidi jdeste daishe be barxadan de filatin jine ke dxazim minak bedem au ezidi de deste daishe da se jari juda juda de frosin au hardam le barxadide 
وبني لنجاوي بأوي صور شيشين صور دشوتينن أما أوجنا دار خواتة دي دفلتة وتي نها دي پاراستنا روان دا پشکشی ها برخوادانا جنیدی که ولی ابو تاکتو گیب دی اکدامپل آف دی یدی دی وومن خو ور انسلیفت با دی ایسیس دیسپایت آل وات هفن تو دم ایون دی هف بین انسلیفت ان لک ریبت ان تورچورت ان سولد ترتی تایمز با دیفرنت پیپل دی ستیل وی گیب دم سف استیم تو ستند اپ ان تک اکشنز اگنس دیس هوریفیک اکشنز اگنس ایسیس ان دی آدرس And the movement of the Kurdish Yazidi movement is a good example of that. I'm going to break this down. We can go on the same. I'm the protest on the 8th of the 25th 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 We are the part of the women organization around the world. We participated in uh, any kind of event with regard to the women rights. And uh, the, the state specifically killed, uh, attacked us through the peace mothers because they, they know that it, they are our own. And I have been in the past few years, and I have been in the past few years, and I have been in the past few years, and I have been in the past few years. Why the threat and continuation of the suppression towards the Kurdish women is systematically carried on by the Turkish state by arresting them, uh, killing them, or uh, uh, sexually, uh, sexually harassing them? The one photograph of the Mezin and Abdara Jizire Navchea Shirnahe, Chawahati Helweshandana, Bedaste, Cheke Natue, Devleta Turk, Lahamber, Bajar in Kurdistan. Bukartini. This picture is the member of the. Uh, uh, this picture is from Gizre, which is like the district in north of the Kurdistan in Turkish side, and uh, it shows how it was destroyed by the Turkish, who is the member of the NATO. Lebemezin Ev Gizre Ev Gikobani. Okay, that the third one is in Turkey. Udaish en wakhev del duashini. Okay, the third one is in Turkey. The second one is in Syria. Basically, the the third one is happened by it did it by. AKP, the, the, Kurdish gov the Turkish government, and the second one is made it by the ISIS. There is no differences. This is called Shangal, it's like the center of the Yedidi people. It's a very uh, historical place for Kurdish Yedidi people because It's like the center of the religion, spiritual places, and it was attacked by ISIS plus AKP, the Turkish government. This alleged incident, one Palmyra, one Jisure, Daesh Chawak, Ji Diroki, the Palmyra Halwashan, Akhepeji, the Sure that Ji Diroki, our Mzgafta Kushunu Halwashan. Well, another example can be given with regard to the historical places. The first one is Palmyra in. In Syria, where, which was destroyed by ISIS, and the second one is in Diyarbakir, the Kurdish capital, uh, the Kurdish capital, and it was destroyed by the Turkish government. Wahshata Hari Mazen will live in Mazen in Ketchikek, Dahsali, Jali Akepe, Vateka Tilkiren, Jiboko Nile, and Janazewe, Dafenbekin, Daikawe, Wae, Deke, Awe Jamade, G Jamade, Jiboko Lashewe Binade. The state authority. The state authority can be expected in this awful actions. The, the, the 10 years old girl was killed by the state uh, security forces, but because of the curfew, they couldn't like bury her, and the mother has to put her body in her own fridge in order to protect her body. This Daika Taibet, the Jizire, the Nava Sukeda Hat Katal Kirin, Haftake, Lashewe, Ardema, the Lete Kichu Ser, Elji Pera Katal Kir. و هری داوی جنازه وی کوچک خارندا. The second example is that a woman who is called Tibet. She was 57 years old. She was killed during the curfew when she went to bring some out of her her children. And then because of the curfew, the state didn't let anyone to go and pick up her body. She was there for seven days. Whoever went to pick up her body, they were killed. 
Ev dîsa ev ê cinazê hacîye ku li paş tangê girêdan û bi erdê re kişan. Des ana dil. Person who was killed and then they dragged his body in the in the city in order to deter the rest of the cities. Ev ê dîsa ev ê taybet hezin taybet yê devleta Türk ve ki p j jitam u timen asatullah bu saddari malan dışkenini. Well this is Turkish killing machine so we're just like uh, like destroying anything in Kurdistan and they put a really interesting uh, writing that they said okay the, the education uh, this is for us to, to educate you now yani hezin tari usa the machine this a jiboko am the kurdistan da peshkiria armenian u insanan dikin de beje hun pinje Armenian. Well, in Kurdistan, because we we respect the Armenian belief and uh, see them as a human and part of our society, they describe us as also bastards, uh, Armenian bastards as well. Or this at the beje ya ketna walate main the beje ya one je Turka hasbkin ya ji betalkin. Either you like Turks or you leave us. Or abji sure ko unesco waki mirase jihane. Parastie le Dorawi Duman Chawa Sarra Hildigden Ud Shautin. This is the the Sur district, which was like recognized as a part of the UNESCO heritage. Unfortunately, it was destroyed by the Turkish state forces. Oh, hatta naha the jin ko hatta na ambition kada khakirin tam the Kurdistan da haft bazar bistu yek nafche sedu penje tah the ben vezil medan. Like there is, a, there is ongoing curfew in Turkey for eight months, and more than seven cities, 21 towns, and 150 neighborhoods still under the curfews. O nahal le servan ambargo ke permazente meshandem duurda de nawawe daridas nodu shesh jen set zarok hishdu bistu char insanen civil hatin katabkeren je tarika de ترمخ ده هزار و پانزده و حتی نه وقتا که هم هاتن ورژی چند کس هاتنه قتل کرنه هم نزانن روژه که هفته که جبری وی او هیش مارا بون بیتی بیفور وی کام هیر مور دن وان هندر چیدر و نایتی سیکس دومن ور تیل جورین اندر در کرفی سیستم و وقت هون دزانن به تایبت جنان قتل دکن چوال لپاری سی سی جن هاتن قتل کرن دیسان لسیلو پی سی وی ساکینه و فاطما جبوک اندام کجایی بون دمجلس باجر دبون ریبرتر نوار کجایی بون هر دچی دیک دمی دهاتم کشت. یعنی دن دمها یکم یا برفمری را اوجی دو وقت از ساکن جانسیز مانداتم کشت. The Kurdish women activated systematically attacked by the state in Paris. There were like three Kurdish women were killed by the Turkish intelligence services. And in Kurdistan, like uh, when they, in their commentary, uh, three another Kurdish uh, activists they were killed by Turkish state forces. Bale ye peje minak ek pir mezine ku ev heza jisere chiya da daket nava bajara uvusa parastina khoye rava kir. But uh, the ye peje Kurdish uh, civilian woman self-defense unit which is established in, in Syria, uh, they, they brought resistance spirituality to the Kurdish and around uh, around them against the ISIS. Na avana ne avan chaperin benefshi amperad bejen jiboko de bakore Kurdistan da waki majberi vi nishan da jinten qatil kirin de chaperin benefshi da jinan jukhara taibet jiboko khaj suikasta khalas kin lebe dare ye pese jin avakirin. It's interesting in order to women protect themselves against the attack of the state, they established a self-defense unit and they put the like purple perimeters in order to not be seen by the security forces. But I bet I will request the next Janana Parastani. Would this as Janan Hawaii anti-tank da bar jibo berhadan? A woman put herself up as a self-defense in front of the tank in order to stop the state security forces to enter the cities. And on 8th of March, they made a big protest against the state of Kurdistan. And on 8th of March, they made a big protest against the state 
Operation Avaya, International Woman Day. Avaya Sinyore Kobani u Pursusi, yani Bakuru Rojava Kurdistani, gel çıkas berhadada devleti usa erişi vandikir le wana Sinyor Rakiru yekitya kha çekir. There was the borders between uh, Syria and Turkey among the Kurds. Whatever the state has done it, they couldn't stop the people to get rid of the borders and united. Kurdisa de nabara kamishlo nesebine da Usa tel rakirin u kamishlo nesebin lever buye yak. And again, between Nusaybin and Kamishlo, Nusaybin is the Kurdish Turkish side and Kamishlo in Syria side. They get rid of the borders in order to unite against the state oppressions. Kurdisa ad protestoy jibo erişan lesar cizre nesebini. There is plenty of protest in order to condemn us. Attacked against Israel and the Sabin. But I bet it is not the You can see how specifically they attack the woman, like each tank they target specifically a woman. Oh, conversion in Azad Iro, ambition breaks the neck per mazen the Kurdistan. I die. Chalu Penj Navande Jinan, Sedu Se Majlisin Tahan, Ye Bajaru Navchean. و نه سازی سیل حفده کوپراتیف نودو شش هف شرادار و سه ست جنین کود دو شرادری دا اندامن و بیست و چهار پارلمانتر نه یه جن جهت گرفت. Despite all the systematic attack against women, the our movement is gradually increased. We have 45 women centers, 130 women assemblies, nine associations, 70 cooperatives, and 20 MPs. و یا هری مزن کجا وکی پروتکوله که به همو سازیان را پروتکول خواهی دید که به به تایبت دریا دموکراسی دا یاد دیان تجربه و هری مزن یک جه که ام ادی دشار دا سری ل دادگاه نرب نتاید دن و دیس رخستنا میجنا سر بخواه تجربه هف شرداری در جهان دا یا یکم و ام پرستنا روا و رخستنا جنان جوان وقت تجربه و دکن جینولوژی وکی زانستی از جنه در جهان دا بجنان را نخواشت که و یا در جره یکم لیدر اک وقت او جنان در بجه حتا لسر مسا آشتی جن تنبه آشتی چه نابی Basically, the Kurdish free movement, uh, they give a, a great role of the um, intellectual pro property mind of the woman, and therefore they establish an like, uh, organization which is called genealogy, in order to the woman intellectualism to be protected and be preserved and promoted. Uh, secondly, they, they give a great value to, to self-defense, because they believe that if the woman doesn't have a self-defense, they will not get strength. Um, thirdly, they, they introduced the co-chair system in Turkey. It was like some... Some, something which is quite unique in the whole world. Previously, there will be a lot of men will be like mayor or MPs, and they will, the woman will not be represented. Whereas they established the co-chair system, where like more than 90 women now the co-chair of the Kurdish uh, uh, cities being uh, mayors. And the Navava Sharan Hamida Chidikin, the cooperative and the Jilu Berke Hua Chidikin. ام دیسات جرناج پروتست های خود دور نکه ون که حتی چکاس ایریش هوا اموا پروتست هم لحمر تندال سرجنی شرط کن جر آکه پهاتی لسرجنی جهزا جسدی حضور چهار صد قط شدت لسرجنی زیاد کری اما ام لحمر وان حمیان شرط کن. What we do despite all those systematic attacks, we still like we establish a lot of cooperative and we. Uh, still resist and do a lot of protests. Uh, the, the persecutions and uh, actions against women uh, increased four times in compared to previous when uh, uh, previous with the AKP regime. Yadam am hardam lahamber wa wan kampanya chedikin waki konferansan waki workshopan waki kampanyan waki parwardehi jibuk am naha. حشت اکادمی مهنه که هم هم جنان هم جنو زلمان به هر را پرورده. We have eight academies to to educate men and women with regard to the women rights and challenged in the society. We 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 had a lot of workshop or training in order to increase that.
and make an equal uh, equality between men and women in real sense in the society. Media jibo me permihi me ajan sa jina taibet jin ha leve dere ajan sa jina tani be be zaman jini nucheya me Turkey doshin. Well, we established uh, uh, we established uh, a journal which is jin uh, ha uh, in order to get rid of the men uh, mentality of expressing the news and have a woman point of view when when making a news jibuma hunaru jin permihima am hamu bashan dwashinen o am de de kurdistan eda de rojlata navinu de jihan eda brekhistinen jiboko am de char parche kurdistan eda waki natawajinen kurd brekhistinen le turkiye majlisa jinen azad و بگی که را رخستنن و دی سال رجلات نوین ما کنفرانس جنان چه کر ام دلگاسیون جنین کنگر جنین جهانینه و ام کوردیناتورا مشا جنین جهانینه Well, uh, at the moment we are the part of the coordinator of the uh, delegation of Fort Women Congress We are also a coordinator of Fort Women March uh, and we are the part of the initiative in the Middle East Jibo ve ki tsteku am nad khazin jwar bejin man ha tane agahi dawa mesela tane ne agahi am de khazin yek le kurdistan bar khadanat mazin he leve dare avropa politika ke druti dike ko am de karben dinamikin irlanda ra bahra le hamber politika druti peshkiri bedan hav yadan azbuka dinim de khazi hamya bahra beje yadan ام تنه نخازم بیشین که ام ام زنن ام سری خواه نکارن آزاد ببین هنچی نکارم ببین جبوی ام دکاربن افشار دکوردستانه دا به هر را لدیجی و دولتین که پشکی دادن افشار ام بر خواه بدن یادن ملتجی وکی شانتاج دجیهانه دا رو رشیا دولت تکرارین ام لحم بر وی رو رشیه به هر را لبر خواه بدن کو کس جدی خانه کت یادن هک چاوی سی امین دو کردستان دا لسر ماسا آشتی تنبه هر دم دولت آکپ پیدلیزه وکی اصلو وکی پروتکولا دلما باخته او یادن ام دخازن هن شرکل کردستان تمشاندن تجریتک لسر کردستانه جبو کو تجریت لسر سرک اجلان تجریت لسر کردستانیه، تجریت لسر جهانیه، هم همو به هر را لامبر و تجریت بر خوابدن یادن بازاری کنات نال وشنا، هم وکی کمپانیا که بیشین که هکر لوام بیه، لمجی بیه، ون ایرو به دنبن سبب اف رو رشیانا همو ورن بی بازاریش. و سپس جبو پشکی دیوان. <laughs> she is saying, okay, I'm gonna just make a short as much as I can. I think the first thing, <laughs> the first thing she would have to say that, okay, we just give the information, but the aim is not to only give information. Um, we should like um, uh, reveal the, the world that the EU itself has a two faces politics uh, and like uh, sacrifice a lot of human rights for the economical benefit of certain people. And we have to work on that together. That is all of our responsibility. Um, the second one is uh, uh, we know that none of us can be free today uh, from the oppression of the capitalism and we have to work together and therefore th there is a big role for those people who live in Europe to take the actions with sol solidarity or responsibility, not even solidarity, responsibility to, uh, to disclose this state, uh, certain uh, European actions against the Middle or East or uh, other African countries. The third one is um, we have seen, in, according to our experience, um, if there is no third eyes, third observation for the peace process, the peace process always collapses in, in, the, in the Kurdish and Turkish experience. It's very obvious that we need you to, to make a big voice to become to, like the international third eyes to observe the situation and don't make the, uh, our rights to be sacrificed for the benefit of economical of certain states. The, like uh, there is a big isolation on Kurdistan. Uh, there is no a lot of news. There is nothing on the news specifically. And this isolation starts from isolation Öcalan from the one of the island, the Kurdish leader who was abducted from Kenya and put in the island since 1999. 
and uh, one of the main reasons we the idolation on him basically is also uh, affiliated with the idolation of the Kurdistan. If you get idolation from Kurdistan or on, on him, that will be uh, it will open uh, the doors for peace process uh, and more p peaceful movement. And the last thing we are making a campaigns, and the campaign is based on basically we can become a twin families, twin brother, twin sisters, or uh, with the Kurdish uh, people who are like who their house are destroyed completely, and in order to make the international make to be heard by international voices. And lastly, she said, "Thank you very much for your attendance and listening to us." Um, okay, our next speaker is Erjan uh, Iboiga, um, who's, who, who will soon correct my pronunciation of his name. Um, he's an activist and social ecologist involved in uh, the Mesopotamian um, environmental movement, um, and also the author of a forthcoming book, Revolution in Rojava, uh, with Pluto Press. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Erjan. Thanks very much. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to speak here um, for our, for us, the struggling Kurdish people. Uh, Europe is our, always a, a region from where uh, the division of Kurdistan was uh, resulted. But Ireland is a little bit different, as this country has a different uh, was also co colony uh, until hundred years ago. And there's still a struggle and uh, a pro still not solved a question. However, um, so I'm active in the ecology movement, uh, the Mesopotamian ecology movement for several years. Uh, I'm active in the uh, Kurdish freedom movement for many years. And I could accompany the development of the movement uh, for many, many years, actually since I, I'm, I was already in the school. And the ecology dimension is, uh, let's say, the most challenging dimension. In 2005, uh, all our, of our political approach concept was described as the paradigm of a democratic, ecological, and uh, women-liberated society. Um, while uh, there was a, already an attempt as, uh, to, to, to develop the democracy and self as organizing of a structure for many years and while the women movement was already quite strong and had a discussion of more than 10 uh, years or let's say self-organizing structures for more than 10 years at the year of 2010 I mean a deep and broad uh, self-organizing structures uh, the je je ecology issue or the dimension was very very new and uh, so we were at the point to say, okay, we want, we want to make this society different. And, uh, but the discussions and the awareness was at that time much lower than it is now. It's connected to many questions like less urbanization or new recent urbanization or recent industrialization, authoritarian states in Middle East and so on. Um, however, for us, it's a ecology is shortly the reconsideration from a critical point of view of the whole life, of the production, of the consumption, of the different squares of the life. And it's a completing our political approach uh, for a new society and it tries to consider more, uh, more contradictions. Um, our movement actually is very new. It's just, just one year ago, there was a new reconstruction process. Uh, it's just started four or five years ago. We came together, many groups and activists. Um, with the time, more people started to discuss from uh, different point of views, and they came from different struggles, especially against dams, but also against coal plants, <coughs> meanwhile, uh, mining, uh, and so on. Um, we have established, I don't go into the detail, but 
it is uh, parallel to the general structure of this um, of a self-organized so, uh, society. Um, uh, it's we have commissions on different levels. We have uh, provincial councils, and within one year, uh, let's say several hundred people started to be involved. It's something which even surprised us when we just started. Um, we are having, uh, let's say, an own structure uh, for all North Kurdistan, which we call also Bakur, uh, on a different level, commissions and so on. Um, we have a just now a very interesting discussion, and this is part of a, actually, actually it's a, a political system which is not so easy to understand uh, from the in the beginning, but it has its sense and meanings, and uh, the, it's a result of uh, many, many discussions. So uh, we are fighting against, uh, of course, ecological destruction, ecological exploitation. Um, ecological destruction means also for us, of course, at the same time, social destruction. Um, this is one let's say, new dimension of our political structure. Second one is on the economy. Uh, it is also a recent discussion. Uh, in 2005, you said we want a democratic, ecological, and uh, women-liberated society. Now we have an addition. It's uh, of a communal democracy, or let's say, sorry, a communal economy, or a democratic economy, how we call it. Um, in Rojava, especially, we have uh, quite uh, developments. In 2012, July, there was a revolution, the liberation of the cities. And just then, the people started to say, OK, we must uh, develop uh, alternative economic structures. That's what we want. But at that point, there was no real big, uh, let's say, experience in Kurdistan, Middle East, or even in the world on a limited level. Uh, it's an issue which is discussed worldwide how uh, to develop a society, an alternative economy, not only for a group or for a small community, for a broader society. And Rojava had, um, let's say, on the one side, this embargo from Turkey, from the south, from, with the fighting different parties, uh, especially ISIS and the others, and in the east, it is a, a South Kurdistan region, or the Iraqi Kurdistan region, under the leadership of Mesut Barzani. Uh, this was, at the same time, a certain um, opportunity uh, to develop something, uh, under, but under very difficult uh, conditions. So then, uh, without to, let's say, to, to um, limit or to prohibit uh, let's say company, private companies, or uh, private property, or so production means uh, a new approach was started. Actually, uh, we had no big companies in Rojava. Uh, there were no big private companies. They all have had left in the uh, meanwhile, and the Syrian state never uh, allowed. And any kind of, let's say, bigger in, uh, industrial structure uh, in Rojava. So uh, in 2014, when I was the first time, or when I was in Rojava, uh, we could see many cooperatives. Um, dozen of cooperatives we could see, and it, especially in the area of production, but not only, also in the uh, area of uh, selling products. Um, but now, when I read and speak to people who come from there and follow all these informations, it, the number has become three, four times, I don't know. There are not hundreds, probably thousands of cooperatives, a lot of initiatives. And the society, uh, the political society, they support these cooperatives. They do not uh, say, okay, if people want to do private uh, uh, business, they can it's not forbidden, uh, we have no special limits for them, but we do not support them, we support uh, the cooperatives. And uh, Janet spoke about the communes, the 4,000 communes in Rojava, and the upper structures, the People's Council on the neighborhood levels, district levels, and uh, the Rojava, or let's say the canton levels. And they there uh, have discussions, quite a lot of discussions, how to develop it. 
uh, I have some pictures which I want to show you. Na, na, na. So, for example, I have not ma many pictures, but this is a textile pro uh, cooperative <coughs> in Rojava. Uh, this is a bakery uh, from women. It's a cooperative. They sell and they have. Sorry. Yes, I have not much, but uh, all the cooperatives we could visit, they worked quite well. They said, okay, we have not the problem that the people come to us. It's more, the issue is more about um, how to organize them, how to put them in contact with the others. Uh, today I just read that there is a co new cooperative of uh, selling all these products and uh, which uh, uh, of Rojava. And they have, meanwhile, let's say, 10,000 members in Rojava. It's a, it's a, let's say, um, mm, an upper structure of many cooperatives. So there are quite very interesting developments in uh, Rojava. Um, but and but when we speak about the uh, economy uh, that, which is developing there, the most crucial issue is that the. Uh, political structures, the direct democratic structures, the communes and the people's council, they are the initiators of these uh, cooperatives. Mm -hmm. Of course, private, every p person can do it. And these co uh, cooperatives are mostly connected. So there is a, a democratic control by the people. They are not only own uh, completely uh, own uh, independent structures, they are very, very directly connected. So one second, I'm coming to... So me, with the years, um, meanwhile, almost four years uh, after uh, the revolution Rojava, which is in a very dyna dynamic uh, process, we have this, uh, I ha we have pre I prepared with some friends this uh, diagram. I will not uh, explain it, all of this, but uh, to describe what happened on the left side, these are the four levels, uh, and the bases are the communes, and uh, it's a mix of, let's say, council democracy and also basis democracy, and uh, they have commissions, they have decided to have eight uh, dimensions. They said, okay, all the life and uh, the issues in the life you must categorize in a certain way. They said we have eight basic uh, commissions, areas, and these are the areas from this political approach of democratic confederalism declared in 2005. And they exist also in Bakur, in North Kurdistan. North Kurdistan, the umbrella structure for uh, our political movement is a democratic society congress. It's uh, not the same. Uh, the conditions are different. But uh, there's a lot of similarities. The basic approaches are, uh, are the same. And uh, actually, when the Rojava revolution started in 2011-12, they benefited uh, from the uh, from the experience in Bakur, in North Kurdistan, and because it started there in 2007, and in 2007 the first neighborhood council started uh, in areas where the movement was strong. But now, then, in Let's say two years ago, one two two years ago, a new discussion started in North Kurdistan: how to develop or deepen the democracy, the, 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 all these structures. And, and then, two years ago, we from the north we started to benefit from Rojava. So it's in a very uh, direct interaction, and people go and come. Uh, I say this because to understand Rojava, we must understand uh, all these all this broader uh, Kurdish uh, freedom movement. Uh, on the right side, you see the democratic self-administration. Uh, this is, uh, has been established two years ago. It's an, a new additional uh, complementary, additional parallel, not really parallel structure, which includes more parts of the society, because not everybody was involved in these uh, communes and people's councils. Uh, the society is uh, very different, as it's usually. And there are not only Kurds, there are the others. They are uh, even among some other political parties, uh, Kurdish parties. 
and not everybody joined it. The majority, yes, but not there still there was in some regions still a big minority, and uh, because of because of that and other reasons, the, there was a discussion started end of 2013, and the, this democratic self administration has been established. It has a legislative council, uh, executive council, uh, but this the structure uh, this, uh, of the council structure which is which we can describe there are two names which are used the one is the uh, people's council of west kurdistan mgr key and this is the upper uh, that's a structure and where all those delegates come together on the highest level and uh, the movement is what also called tevdem uh, if you uh, start to read about Rojava, you will hear, hear also the name of Tevdem. Actually, Tevdem, MGRK, it's the same. Let's say this. However, this is, uh, these structures, they are integrated more and more in uh, the interactions with the democratic self uh, administrations are very strong. Actually, the main actor of the democratic self administration are the council, uh, the Tevdem, MGRK. They are the main initiator. That's nothing which comes from outside. And I say this because it's a dynamic process. Um, the, the aim is to include as much as people, but at same at same time to develop these uh, radical democratic structures. So it's a challenge, of course. When this democratic self-administration has been declared in January 2014, we had in Rojava I guess 1,500 communes. Now we have 4,000. And the communes are on the lo lowest level and where communes are to, to bring people into the political processes and the decisions and it empowers people. This is uh, something very important. So I'm coming to the end, uh, but only last one last point. Um, Actually, I said it already. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, said it. I think at this point I, I say thank you for listening, and I'm uh, happy to hear your opinion and discussion. Thank you. Tonight, tonight's event um, required a fair deal of organizing, and it wouldn't have happened without one person in particular. And um, that's Jose Antonio Gutierrez, or Pepe, as he's known. Um, I'd like to ask Pepe over here just for a moment to talk about um, local solidarity actions, Rojava calling, um, and uh, about what's going on here in Dublin uh, to support the struggle in, in, in Rojava and Kurdistan. Um, so after that, we'll open up uh, to questions. Yeah. No, it's uh, first of all, thank you very much for everyone for coming. It's really great to see this amount of interest in Rojava and in Kurdistan and in Bakur and everything that's happening in that part of the world. And as I said, uh, it is great. It feels great. I want to say thank you to all of you. Thanks to the people that came, some from very far and some uh, very big problems with visa, with the Turkish state and so on, in order to make it here and share a bit of the experience they're having uh, and that they're building at this very minute as we are speaking here. And what I want to say is that uh, for a year or so, since actually the last Anarchist Book Fair indeed, uh, a couple of us came with the idea of uh, building up a solidarity group uh, with Kurdistan. And that, in a way, built up with the experience that uh, many Kurdish uh, residents in Dublin and in Ireland have been carrying. And I want to as well acknowledge the role of people that have always been there, uh, Sadar, uh, Murat, Rohad, uh, uh, so many others, uh, Mevlut, over there, and so many others that I've seen in, in, in one march after another carrying uh, the Kurdish flag, carrying uh, the message of solidarity, uh, whether it's Palestine, whether it's anti-war initiatives, you know, and the activities we've done for Kurdistan as well. Um, we started solidarity with Kurdistan, uh, with this group of uh, Kurdish residents, and uh, before it was fashionable to talk about Kurdistan, actually at a time when very few people know about Kurdistan. I remember when Turkey invaded northern Iraq, the uh, Bashur, uh, southern Kurdistan, got, I don't know, like 1,000 people out in the streets to protest. All of them were Kurdish, and the only non-Kurdish person was myself, and that was because I was working just 
they, if I decided where they marched past them, I said, ah, sure, I should join them. <laughs> so like, I was going for a coffee and I just came out and joined them. Okay, Mark, my boss was not very happy at the time. <laughs> but uh, but uh, what I want to say is that we are trying to link people coming from different backgrounds. And I think it's been very important that over the last while we've started to, to break as well their isolation of the Kurdish community here. And uh, we, we, we have a community with people from all over the place. We have people from, 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 from Kurdistan, of course, with people from the different regions of Kurdistan from Latin Americans like myself, people from Ireland, people even from County Cavan, whether you believe it or not. And, uh, and, and, and the most important thing is to say that it doesn't matter where you come from, because at the end of the day, we're not Irish, we're not uh, Turkish, we're not Scottish, we're not nothing. We are just citizens of a world that is yet to be born. And that's the most important thing. We don't belong to anything that we have at the moment. We belong to what we're building with our own effort for the future. And that world, that we are trying to build, that world that we are trying to construct, sometimes with very humble steps, with very humble measures. Um, they, they talk about the actual policies and actual things that have been done, you know. That world is what uh, the Turkish state and what other states in the region and their international uh, suppliers or backers or allies, as you would call their own gallant allies, are trying at the moment to actually drown in blood. It is that world which is yet to be born that they're trying to drown in blood. And it's that beautiful baby that we have to defend, that we have to surround with our solidarity. And that's why this group, uh, Rojava Calling, was formed. Uh, uh, you can approach us uh, with, with Paul and some of the other people that are here and talk to us at the end of this meeting and we can coordinate in order to practice actual solidarity action here. <coughs> Uh, we will call eventually in the coming weeks for a meeting just to uh, wrap up and finalize some of the ideas that we have in terms of uh, solidarity actions. But for those of you who can talk or who are shy or whatever, we'll give you uh, our email address so you can, you can email us. And it's Rojava Calling, as you know, some of us like the clash. So, <laughs> so Rojava Calling at riseup.net, I will spell it. R O J A V A. C A L L I N G, Rojava Calling, at Riseup, or I S E U P dot net. Okay, so just contact us and we will be doing a further meeting to do some solidarity and practical actions that have come up in this uh, wonderful, fruitful, and a spectacular week we've shared together with the activism meeting, different people uh, in Ireland. So that's it. Thank you very much, folks. Some options. There's also the free women uh, women foundations in Kamishlo, the big, biggest city in Rojava, and there are some leaflets on this on the table. Yes. 
you can even donate them. And there is there are some opportunities in where there's a association in in how to say in based in Yerbakir in Ahmed. It's called the Rojava Association, which organized the support from uh, Turkey and Baku to Rojava, but they accept also uh, donations from abroad. So there are some opportunities. Meanwhile, it was a problem two years ago. If it's, it's a question about financial support. Yes. Okay, any other questions? And um, we look over here first. Uh, to uh, just a few words on the Rojava economy right now. To what extent, uh, with all the cooperatives, uh, to what extent uh, is it a competitive market economy versus a cooperative uh, democratically planned economy? And uh, specifically, uh, what's the relation of the communal assemblies to the organization of the economy? When I was there, in, when I was there in, uh, my first trip there, I was told that the cooperatives are accountable to the um, to the the council system. Um, that they have uh, they have to meet with them periodically, and so that the the cooperatives are actually embedded in this this multi-tiered council system and, and, and responsible to it. And also the economic committees that are on that chart there um, are are much involved in supervising the cooperatives. This is my opinion. So, uh, must, uh, every commune or council on a high level has an economic committee, economic committee, and they are the bodies which initiated this uh, co uh, commute, as we said. And we have cooperatives on the commune level and the higher level, and uh, actually, one, uh, two to three years ago, actually, each commune, uh, if not each commune, several communes together, they started to discuss what we can do. And meanwhile, actually, in every neighborhood at least, uh, but often several in one neighborhood, uh, there are initiatives for to establish cooperatives. So people look how is the life organized, what is produced here, how we can bring people together who are doing some different stuff. And uh, this was the, the, the discussion uh, how to organize our um, agriculture. This is uh, not an easy issue because the land belongs to people, but some land, land belonged to the state, Syrian state. They took first this state and this land and, and gave it to the poorest people. And they were mostly have been organized in cooperatives. As, and then second step, they encourage people, uh, farmers, to come uh, together in a cooperatives on a village basis. So this is a very dynamic process now. And I spoke about these uh, big cooperatives which sell these products. It's not only selling, they're also, through selling, uh, they have an influence on the price. You know, there's a war and there are people who are trading, they're smuggling from a different region, different goods. And some of the goods, they do not, uh, you don't have them, or they have, you have them very limitedly. It's an influence on the prices. Uh, it's a, um, it affects the life standard of the people very directly. And uh, they have established, they have also something from the beginning of the revolution, there was a certain price control. They took over the uh, several bigger, let's say, let's, uh, companies, state companies. Uh, at the beginning, there were several public companies, and there were uh, public companies that were responsible to the, um, the let's say, the construction on the can canton level or a district level, depends on the public company. And now, now there's a effort to transform this public company step by step to cooperatives. And uh, there's this effort, and they do it slow, not too too fast. And yes, this is a process which we have, and there are some areas or production areas where the private companies are still dominant. And it's a process of to let's say the to make the cooperatives bigger. 
And uh, the confrontation, there's not a real direct confrontation, let's say, with uh, some higher classes. They do not actually exist in the area of companies, but there are some big landowners. So uh, the approach is not to, to, to search, to look for the direct uh, confrontations with them, because this can create other social problems, not problems, but contradictions, and other parties can use, misuse, abuses, but it's also not necessary at this time. And the agriculture land is so big, it's huge, and they have too, actually too much agricultural land, and they have overproduction, but of some goods, of some products. So they uh, are in process of diversified uh, agriculture, that I mean the, uh, the type of products. They are in this process, and they had a, already they have already some success. They are always more capable to feed uh, the population more better and better and have a food sovereignty. I think we have at the same uh, yeah, and strategy with Russia because uh, North Kurdistan and West Kurdistan they are affected from uh, neither Ojalan ideology. So we have the same system to against, we are anti capitalist and special uh, economically. Uh, we make a common uh, pro and cooperative. Now, when I present Kesha, we have a seven team cooperatives. One is for clothes, like a textile, and for vegetable agriculture and mm, special to grow animal because we don't believe uh, Turkey state uh, they used to embargo for Kurdistan every time now for Rojava they, they make the same things and the Kurdish place is special Jizre, Musaibin and Sur Sur was in Ahmed they used embargo in Ahmed also so we don't believe that we build in our economical system, but it's not enough because we are struggling, we are in war, we are trying to um, uh, build in our economy. And um, we had a, another question over here. Sorry. A couple suggestions I'd like to explain on the um, health group on the question for um, I think it's very important that everybody here, if they don't actually join the group over there, and I'm not a member, but I'll be, I'll be, I'll be over there if you know join me, okay? I think everybody here has actually heard this. Um, I presume most people will be seriously inspired by this, so I think if you're inspired by this, please join up. If you're, if you're not prepared to join up or you're afraid to join, um, I don't know why I'm joining either, but I like what I did so far, okay? But, but what I say is that, you know, uh, if the organizers can maybe get a sheet at the door or wherever we can send their email so that if you're organizing um, whatever happens to be a demonstration outside of work or whatever you have in mind, that there's a, a contact list there available because I think most people here again would be more than willing and very positive about, about uh, supporting something like that, okay? Um, I go from the sublime to maybe ridiculous, um, I got solidarity even before. Um, T-shirts were available, and I'm thinking particularly of them. Um, there's a lot of women in the group here, and not just teachers for women, but, but, but say ones where there were logos that are taken from the women's activist groups um, up there on the screen area, on the design designs for the T-shirts, so they could be possibly made by some of these communes in the in, 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 um, in that cell, okay? Um, just two questions then. First question being, um, to what extent, given that there's such a, a really strong feminist and popular drive behind the movement. Uh, it have solidarity links been built with feminist groups um, in, in actually in Istanbul, Ankara, Izmir and so on. Uh, to what extent they actually provide material support um, and then from there expanding out to the rest of Europe and so on. That's one question. The second question being um, given that it's largely an agrarian area and most people would probably be in the same ink, roughly in the same income band, you wouldn't have like income bands um, of huge classes like you have in, in, in Western society. To what extent is it um, 
it's, it's actually, it seems to me to be almost <coughs> the ideal conditions for the flowering of such organisations. And maybe when um, this man is writing his book here, um, he can maybe expand from that and possibly consider how the, you know, the lessons of workers' councils in the past and the practical experience of your groups there can aid towards the building of, of similar, uh, strip, you know, highly democratic and um, popular organisations in, 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 in areas which are not just uh, agrarian, but uh, infused with the experience of, 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 uh, of, of workers' internationally that I spoke over the last century. So I just leave that as the question. Jugo Avatarna could be studied in her circle, the Bakuri could be studied with me. A tele ambition target for a pastor of the war, Tira Chimian, a wicked Tavanyak Messer Malin could net the Nava Pastor of the water, eh? Hamutsim on Tavak Messer Vision, Pusula Bihon. تلویزیون و چیکاس شیرگ بکاری همه توان کرد. تلیه نوشان بله مثل تلی لجیزی دانزده هزار ما هاتن نوشان بله. اما مالک دن همه هاتن توان کرد. تلی استودی تو اکسپریمنت but on the other hand, they took over any things related to people. Like they were both, they robbed, they robbed the people out of like up and of those listed stories. Uh, for example, in Vida, there is uh, 12,000 houses were destroyed. But then in the whole city, like uh, people that don't have any fleet, any bigger tool, or like their goals, they were stolen by the number of people. <coughs> ve erişa vahşi mesela derecesi birinde bir hafta jerzemin adamın kudruma birinde bir hafta işte şehit ama de cihan ya da vahşete bu sanatı meşine minak ya kemer jibu ve yek ve vahşete şermezar bakır dedi alikarya avakırna cihan اب تن انکاری نه جبوق هکت به وحشت شر مزار نه که تیکی روزش نه که پیش با انشاب نگری آبکر نزدیک زلم درجه از که هم تیر کارگول آبک یه نظم یه کم شر مزار ولی کردن اون هم بر به وحشت و پیش به ایران دار مثلا به جد تجربه که وانه بر فداره دکوکیستان را نظم کو به پیش کی وی کمپانی نه تریلی بود که همین دارم مثل هوا یا کیوان نواره دکی دل هر چی لازم است که وایشی بکن لبی و تجربه بر خلاقی رو. تو از یه توپ با تا خود سیت سیستماتیکی کی در اتاق کردیش پیپل سپسیفیکی این دیزه در واژه کرده و پیپل ور وانده دو ور این آنرگا و بعد دو ور بر بر سیت فورسس. ناو به تو از بر تو دی ای ای بیلی که we should like uh, condemn it. Like the action should start from that way, from to condemn, but then don't stop it condemning, but then to take action for building up. And we believe that in Ireland, the people have a lot of experience of struggling, and they should, uh, they, they have a, not only duty of solidarity, but also responsibility <coughs> to stop this violence and to become the part of it in order to stop it and grow the resistance in Europe in order to people to hear the, the resistance of people. شما جنگی بچه‌ی ترکیه را زاتی رخستن نه وقتا کو سرگو جلان گفت جن پارچه کی چاره سیا مذاکره نه و دمی مکم آور کش مجلس جن آزاد و دیسا هودانا جن ترکیه جبو آشی بیگ مهوات آوانا هر دم یه نبیش انجا علی ترکی را وکی ایزر انگار استانبول مرسی ندارد. او نزدی کم کم تجلش بوده پشتی. یعنی رخس رک مبوانه. The Kurdish Women Organization has a lot of connection with the Turkish Feminist Network and Turkish Women Organization as well. 
we are under the two umbrella organization uh, to have a campaign with them. Uh, as a, well, the Kurdish leader of the Iran uh, announced that the women should be the part of the, the peace process and they, they should have a uh, place in the uh, peace tables when the negotiation going on. We also uh, take their uh, views in regard to in regarding, in regarding to appoint which members of our, our movement in order to represent all of us. Uh, yeah, I get a dash of the fucky, but I bet she in the Jaman today. Yanni Zieta Daishu, I kept a lecker, Jimmy Tikiji by Bashan, who now it fucked a dash you, I kept a Hamujan and Jihadi keep a risky, Masaratale, Masaraka Kurdistania. Jubui Pishkian dead and it, poor Mehima Guru, what political The Turkish government at the moment, the Tel Alliance with the ISIS. As, the, as I showed you, and they specifically targeted the woman in order to deter the whole society. Uh, therefore, the, the tension is not the Kurdish people themselves. This conflict impacts the Turkish uh, people and the women as well, but in the, in the long term, this tension also will have an effect on European people as well. And therefore, we should take actions against this atrocity in order to stop them today rather than tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I mean, okay, and Farah will, will go with you. And, yeah. Um, it, it, it's just a bit of a comment and uh, another question, but um, I, I was just thinking, you know, I think that the, uh, the people to people solidarity uh, is really, really important um, and, and, you know, Andrea has given us some ideas of that, but I think that another side of that is, um, is keeping an eye on the structural uh, sort of racism of, of Europe connected to migration. So, you know, in, in the sense that, um, that Europe has just given Turkey, what is it, 6 billion uh, euro, um, and Turkey is not using that money, you know, on, uh, on people seeking refuge, they're using it to put down uh, movements in Rojava. So I think, like, while, while we think about, you know, the people to people solidarity, we should also think about our, what we can do, you know, here to end, um, and this sort of willful inaction of the EU um, to end these huge payments to the Turkish state that are being used uh, to kill people in Rojava. Um, and, and also, I think, you know, even further than that, I think we have this, like, Europe and America has to stop thinking it can colonize ideas of democracy and women's rights and all these things, because we see here, um, you know, very, a very strong example that it that doesn't come from. You're up a women's right. So I think like um, that's that's all they Okay. Um any other speak a few items. Um okay, yep, we launched the user. Um so in in the in 1936, Orwell, George Orwell, arrived in Spain at the start of the Spanish Revolution, and he said that he found something startling and overwhelming. And what he, one of the things which he found so startling and overwhelming was people were treating one another as equals. And you've talked a lot about the, the structures, and I understand why that's so important, the structures of the democratic experiment in Rojava, but I'd like to invite you to talk a little bit more about the everyday relations, relations between people uh, in this, uh, uh, demo this democratic experiment. And also, just to the, the, maybe to the last speaker, could you say a little bit more specifically about the ecological dimension of Rojavan democracy? <coughs> Religion and how do you 
I presume that uh, the majority of uh, members of the women's organisation are in fact Muslim women, and that uh, they have uh, interpreted Islam in a different way to what we understand it to be from here. That uh, nobody, uh, people, the majority here think of Islam as a kind of a block and um, not being varied and not having variations or uh, arguments with it. But how, how do you add, but organising uh, social organisations or women's organisations in particular, they've had a tremendous difficulty with the religious atmosphere in Ireland in the past. And um, we, we might take a, a couple more, um, Connor and, and then yourself. Uh, yeah, sorry to go on the question. This is really in relation to the source, major social aspect of life. And I'm kind of curious just to know, so when I first heard about the Zapatistas uh, in Mexico, and I had this idea in a relatively different way, when I first heard about the Kurds struggle with self determination, and as well what was going on in Tibetan. Um, and then the reality of life in the Zapatistic community is that maybe even now I might know more about the communication language so Comandante Marcos than someone who lives in the Zapatistic community. They might not know the intricacies of, of the organizational structure of this type of thing. What I'm curious about is in, in Rojava, how many people participate? Like how many people know about the mechanisms of, of what's going on? Are they, the, the kind of message that comes out, are people really involved? Are young men have a, do they have a radical critique of patriarchy and capitalism? And, and you know, like I, I just how many people are involved in day to day running of activities? It, it's a social life mixed with political life. I don't have to say any very question. Okay. Um, yeah. um, how do we stop Angela Merkel from helping Erdogan uh, <laughs> okay, so maybe why don't we try them and then we'll we take another round of what about um, so who would like to go first? Um, Shinde. Tekili proje arasında Taybet se kantonun çevre geri çıkıyor. Cizre Ambejin Kruvali bu Afrin. Afrin ile Ali Türkiye kere Kruvali de Nagar Avanda. Tekili Vana Rojana Ji Ali Afrin'e de kutu. Ama Ambejin Ji Ali Kruvali da Zedetir ve Bakoza Tekili de Rojana Ji Ali Afrin'e de kutu. Kantona Cizri Ambejin Başur Uğur Bakura Tekniye Ola de Navarra Pergara Kovan Çeki Ya Zati Konfederat Ambejin Dövedeli Rojana Arabel Mesela Ambejin de Navarra Rojana Ende Bakur Çeva Ambejin Mahalli Kurt Arab Suriyani Asuri یکشی کرد تری نه مسلمان کل هم علیمین هم ازیدین هم مسلمان سه باوری مون جدا هم نشبوی که هم تکیه روزانه به باوری جدا را هم جی به ناسلامی جدا را تکیه و وکی من اول که جای گود کل پدر پدر که جای دوید پرگانه همون تکیه نخواهد تو بین روزانه اقتصادی زاتی با کمپلیتی خارج از بسیار برای خستگی دنوا مجلس داره خارج خستگی خستگی جنام یا جوانان یا پاراستن دنوا همو تکیه کو وقتی کمپلیت لطفا اما علی خریا کت چه جوان را اما نه همو بخواد دنوا خدا پاتا تکیه وانه روزان به پاراستن دنوا او
Taiwan, uh, there was a society there was, where was almost no space for any kind of uh, association, organizations apart from the state. And uh, everything was organized very centralistic from the state, even the municipalities. And the people were very appendic in their uh, daily life. And uh, then this revolution came. It's a very extreme contrary. It took time until the people took really uh, initiative. Now it's just coming. Uh, even in 2012, it was still limited. And uh, these, all these small communes, they are uh, empowering people. They are learning how to organize themselves. Uh, they were, let's say, many, many steps behind us, but now they are going ahead, let's say, slowly going ahead, and they're making big pro uh, progress. And there, the political party, PYLD, the Democratic Union Party, from the Kurdish Freedom Movement, uh, parallel to the PKK, they were the initiators of that, and they decided not to have a political party structures and to do this, and uh, now we see the results of it. Um, and uh, I spoke about the political structures and so on, but in there, in this region and the Middle East, the people do not, let's say, do uh, fix, concentrate less on how the structures really work, formality, or how it's in the status, and so on. It's uh, many things are solved also in a solidarity way, communal way. And there's a, there's just a certain uh, difference we should never forget. About LGBT, LGBT rights, uh, it has, as I know, uh, until 2011, there were no LGBT groups, in, even not really illegally, but I don't know really. But now it took time after the revolution that now people start to speak about it. Even the social contract, I'm not sure, but it's not directly manage, mentioned. But there's no uh, position against LGBTQ rights. It's it's a process now, and there are first people working on it, say indirectly, in Bakur, the city where I live now, in Ahmed, it's a big city. There are now two LGBTQ groups, and they're politically active, and it's also something new for some years. So the Kurdish Freedom Movement they gives uh, so a uh, uh, space for them. It was not at the beginning like this, it's a step. Um, then, about the religion, I can say the approach is of the, the Kurdish Freedom Movement from the beginning on. They said, even already in the 80s, we need, we need a, a revolutionary approach to the question of religion, not like the most uh, leftist movements of Turkey have died in the 70s and 80s. To that they have lost a lot of people, and this gave us a tool to the Turkish state to abuse the religion, instrumentalize the religion against the revolutionary movements. And now there's a, uh, within the Democratic Society Congress, the umbrella organization in Baku, there is a Democratic uh, Islam Congress. So people, religious people, come together within this movement. And uh, not everybody's master, but 15, 20% are Alevis, and the smaller parts are Yazidis. And these people from these different religions, and also people, uh, Christians, I mean, and Assyrian Christians, they come together. It's, uh, it was also a very difficult process to bring them together. And uh, this is a one precondition to be a successful, uh, generally, as a Kurdish free movement. Um, how to stop Merkel from supporting Turkey? Uh, <laughs> question. I think we must uh, concentrate, uh, emphasizing or insisting to say uh, this field is unacceptable from a humanitarian point of view. This deal is a, uh, is causing uh, a wave of refugees in other region, maybe on the short time you can stop Syrian uh, refugees or Iraqi refugees to enter Europe, but in other regions you are creating more refugees, and uh, this is not acceptable. Um, 
and we must say where are you where are your human rights criteria which were so important in your foreign policy we must say it again and again and we should not forget um, that this deal with the Turkish uh, with Turkey uh, is something in long term they are preparing Turkey and other states for new ways uh, of uh, to, to to stop refugees and um, probably not very properly, the next future, 10 years, 20 years, uh, more refugees will try to come to Europe as the economies and social structures in so many states of the world, especially in Africa and Asia, are uh, destroyed more and more through this uh, economic and political structure of our world. Um, and last, ecology in Rojava, I mean, this is that in Bakur it was a very big, weak point uh, five, ten years ago. It's still, let's say, the weakest point for me in Rojava. And there people are working still on the basics, like uh, organizing uh, water, the drinking water structure, wastewater structure, garbage, have some parks in the cities that which didn't exist, to reforest. There were no, in most places there are no forests. They have the first, uh, let's say, nature park. And they uh, try to basic things, but it's not still very far reaching. But we have now an ecology academy that means people have started to discuss broader, and the movement is actually open to discuss it more. Uh, theoretically, there are discussions now. It's also a, pro a process, a process uh, in which uh, I think very hopefully. <coughs> Okay, we, we'll take one last round of questions and then we'll ask um, the speakers maybe to give their kind of closing thoughts. And um, so we have Quiva here. This is a comment and a question just following on from what Pepe was, was referring to. Um, and if, if possible, I'd like to get both Aisha and Ellie, who's sitting over there, is feedback on it. Um, but in relation, I think, to what Pepe was stressing, you know, of the intergenerational and multifaceted nature of the Kurdish struggle, and the fact that this is relatively new on the broader left, you know, certainly on many of our movements sort of maps in the last four years. My question as a feminist is how do you avoid sort of the fetishization and the exoticization of women in armed struggle? Um, because it's, it's something that I find very problematic watching the imagery, watching the imagery even that our movement share, you know, that, that almost the armed component of the struggle, which is extremely brave, you know, but is, is presented in isolation. Um, and it, it, I think it, it perpetuates a very reductionist understanding of struggle, and it also perpetuates something, like if you look at the mainstream media, particularly in the state's coverage, you know, of the movement in Rojava, you know, with all of this sort of imagery of badass woman and kick-ass woman, and it, it was reductionist because it didn't stress, you know, the revolutionary, ongoing community building, the grassroots work. Um, so, so I suppose as a feminist, my question is, even with our, our movement, how do you avoid this thing? You know, and I think we're all guilty of it. But I mean, I, I, Tress isn't here tonight, but it was interesting on March the 8th on International Women's Day, she sort of made this little quip on Facebook, a joke, sort of saying, oh, we're sort of reminded by our male comrades that it's International Women's Day because they all put up women, you know, photos of women with, with, with guns. Um, so how, how do you honor the incredible bravery, the incredible bravery of the women on the front line without contributing to this very reductionist understanding of, of this struggle, which is holistic, which is community-based, um, you know, and which, which preceded and will go beyond, you know, armed, armed resistance. Okay, we, we'll take uh, two more questions. Um, so just yourself, yeah, just, Patrick. Yeah, just uh, following on that, um, because of its agrarian area and also this for gender equality uh, and for autonomy, I was wondering, uh, has there been any contact with the Zapatistas in Mexico? Because it seems like they're very similar movements. And also, I was going to ask because of. Sorry, uh, uh, so uh, one, one sure. question. Um, and just one more then? Um, yeah, okay, you're sorry. Um, I think for the month or so, we had a couple of shares and had some time with the world. I'm just wondering that uh, the Syria that comes out of this, if it eventually reaches peace, but it will have to become federalist Syria if Rojava is to forget, to keep its autonomy. 
as that's uh, what the, the desired goal, end goal is, or is it to link up Greater Kurdish area, or to have like the Iraqi Kurdistan uh, government kind of has there without creating a state? How, how is it going to defend itself in um, a new Syrian state emergency of this? Yes. Um, I think 
uh, the, the imagery of women in guns is it's not, it's, not the, it's, not, it's not the problem of the women who are actually doing the fighting, it's the problem of the media that's reporting on it. And yeah, yeah. I think that those of us who are bothered by it need to, need to speak up and complain and, and call it out when it happens. Um, I think that's part of, part of what we can do. Kind of, um, kind of our we can call each other out in call. terms of more nuance. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the future defense, of the, Syrian, of the North Syrian Federation, which the United States has not recognized. It's, it's been working with the YPG now. It's um, giving, it, it's giving the YPG material aid, but it has not recognized this new Syrian Democratic, the Northern Syrian Federation that's been declared. On the contrary, it still wants a, um, it's a, um, a stated policy goal. It's a unitary Syrian state. What could go wrong? Um, yeah, <laughs> um, which is also the same thing as I was. Um, it's very d depressing to consider um, what could happen. Yeah. I think the Federation, North Korean Federation declaration from last month, uh, it, is, it is something which came because to get a certain acceptance or better acceptance on an international level. I think it's a f result from the tactical reasons. Um, it was not discussed really uh, in the last years. Um, I think this is what I want to add. Uh, what was the Batistas? There are not big or strong uh, organizational uh, relations or connections. From the last 15, 20 years, several times, Kurdish actors went to, to the Zapatistas and met them. And I know several people who read a lot of talk about the Zapatistas. And uh, very few times Zapatista activists came to Kurdistan, Middle East, or even to meet uh, Kurdish activists in Europe. But the structure in uh, Rojava has taken some thoughts from uh, the Zapatistas there, I am sure. I have spoken to some people who are did investigation researches uh, on the Zapatistas, on the political structure, and uh, looked to the details, and there are some similarities, some more than some. Okay, um, I, I, at this point I think um, we're, we're going to wrap things up. I'd like this uh, maybe just a short appreciation for... <laughs>